All right, so as you know, after presidential debates or vice presidential debates, they have this thing that has a very rare type of candor for political discourse that's called the spin room. And basically, surrogates of each party, each candidate, each campaign go there and argue why their candidate was so fantastic and the other one was terrible. And they have talking points about what one candidate said and the other one said that was so terrible or so great based on who they're there to hack for. And one of the things that we do is send Michael Tracy to these uh, uh, events along with Megan O'Rourke, who's a producer uh, and a member of our team at System Update, precisely because those aren't the kind of questions that Michael tries to ask. So we're just going to show you a few of these, uh, the ones we don't get to, though they're very worth watching. We're going to put on our Locals platform. So if you want to see those and you're a member, you can. If you want to see them and uh, join Locals, you can do that as well, where we have a lot of exclusive content that we don't get a chance to put on the show. But here is uh, Michael just giving you a little bit look of, of a look about what the spin room actually is. All right, I have to keep my voice down. I don't know why exactly, but this seems like the right thing to do because we're in the CBS network corridors, I guess. I kind of want to bust into the Drew Barrymore show set. That might be a, a more exciting than watching the vice presidential debate, which might be down that way. I'm not, I think that might be where the debate's happening. The spin room is in here, which we were just kind of walking around there doing some interviews. Um, help yourself to a beverage of cho of your choice, and yeah, I mean this uh, this this studio, this whole building kind of reminds me of like a high school basement or something. I don't know. It's a little bit weird, but you know, hey, we're making the most of it. I I would. Why are people gathered over there? You, it might be. Yeah, I mean, let's go take a look. I I think it might be people who are. Like photographers or stuff, or who are who are allowed to? Yeah, let's not even test our luck. I don't want to even get involved. <laughs> I don't want to run afoul of any secret service. Yeah, that might be the what is it, the spray? It's like the photographers would go in and take the photos. Okay, so there you go, Drew Barrymore show, CBS. This, apparently, this is like usually uh, typically where. The CBS uh, sports, like NFL and stuff, is uh, filmed. I don't know. I'm just going with the flow. All right. Goodbye. So it's always incredibly entertaining and fulfilling to watch Michael's stream of consciousness observations without any purpose, as he did there. But actually, the reason we like sending Michael so much to these events is because all of these things run on this very strict protocol, like this very strict kind of unwritten rules about how everybody's supposed to conduct themselves, what journalists are supposed to do and not do, who, they were, who they're supposed to ask, what kind of questions they're ask, asking. And Michael, in part, has no idea what any of those are because he just never bothered to learn them. And even if he did know them, he doesn't care about them at all. So it's really just like letting a, a bull loose in a china shop. And given that this china shop is filled with the worst people on the planet, um, it's, I think, something always revealing to do. So let's show you uh, an interview that he was able to conduct with Jasmine Crockett, which I found very fascinating. Jasmine Crockett is a young, uh, I believe she's in her second term, Democratic member of Congress from Texas. She's a black woman, so therefore she's often considered to be part of the left wing of the Democratic Party. She's known for her very combative, sort of spicy rhetoric about Donald Trump that usually is a little more extreme than what most members of Congress are willing to express about Trump. And so she's had this reputation for being sort of a, kind of like a Marjorie Taylor Greene type, but of the Democratic Party. And yet Michael decided to ask her not about how great Tim Waltz did or how terrible J.D. Vance is, but instead about her consistent votes to uh, authorize billions and billions of dollars to fund the Israeli military and to pay for its wars and how that can be reconciled with the values and views she typically claims to believe in and the way in which she defended Israel, it basically sounded like he was talking to Marco Rubio. Let's watch what happened. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, Governor Wall started out tonight by repeating this refrain that Israel has a right to defend itself. Yeah. 
Israel has just invaded Lebanon. Israel is now intimating that it could attack Iran. So shouldn't we be looking for a little more than just these platitudes about Israel having a right to defend itself? What is the limiting principle, especially when the U.S. is the one providing the armaments for Israel to wage these military campaigns, as you know, having voted for the National Security Supplemental back in April, which underwrote Israel's war effort? I absolutely did vote for it. I voted for that along with every other supplemental that was available. Um, and I will tell you this. It is important that people understand what diplomacy looks like, and it looks like the fact that this relationship between Israel and the United States has existed since before I was born. And guess what? This relationship will continue on in perpetuity even after I'm gone. And so when you look at Israel, I think it is important that people start to talk about um, the fact that the state of Israel versus their leadership. Because right now, or when I went to Israel, I know that the people were protesting Netanyahu because Netanyahu was reforming the courts. In addition to the fact that Netanyahu was under investigation along with people in his administration. Sound familiar? Does it sound like somebody else that you know? It sounds like Donald Trump to me, somebody that has reformed our courts, courts that have decided that he now has a level of immunity that he should not be entitled to based on our laws, as well as somebody who is under criminal indictment, as well as somebody who has criminal convictions. And so different people do their votes for different reasons. But for me, when I'm looking forward and I'm trying to figure out what is going to happen, if for some reason, let's say we say, well, you know what? You had your democratic election and we just don't like your leader, so we will leave you. Will that give permission to our allies to leave us if, God forbid, Donald Trump come back into power and then they leave us and then that leaves us more insecure. So, I mean, everybody has their reasons for why they do stuff, but I will also tell you this, because the issue today has to do with the fact that Iran ended up firing missiles over into Israel. After Israel invaded. Okay, I just need to stop it there, even though there's so much more to go, as bad if not worse. But I just want to break down. I just want to break down how incoherent and internally inconsistent everything she just got done saying there was. So the question was: Tim Waltz defended Israel in the debate and said that they would keep funding Israel for whatever they wanted to do, and. He said to her, is there, is there any limit on what Israel can do, given that you're one of the people who voted for the supplemental to send billions and billions of dollars to Israel? And she began off, she started off by saying, yeah, I did do that. Um, I'm happy I did it. She had this bizarre rationale that the U.S.-Israel relationship has been like this, but since before she was born and that for some reason it will exist in perpetuity. So why should she try and stop it? She might as well just go along with it since it's, I guess, inevitable anyway. But her point was to try and say that Benjamin Netanyahu is like Donald Trump and that he, when she went to Israel, was the subject of protest. I don't know if she knows this or not. But the reason Benjamin Netanyahu is the prime minister of Israel is because he was elected democratically. He's actually been the prime minister of Israel for the last 20 years with only a little bit of time off in between the very short spurts where he's not running the country because the Israeli people have chosen to support Netanyahu. And while, yes, it's true, there are tens of thousands or even 100,000 or so people in Tel Aviv protesting, Netanyahu's failure to get the hostages back, they're not protesting the war in Gaza. There's almost complete unanimity on the part of Netanyahu and the opposition leader and pretty much every party in Israel about the nobility and justification of, of, of this. So if you're looking for a reason to oppose funding Israel, then you can cite the fact that Netanyahu is like Trump. You don't support Netanyahu or trust him because he's like Trump. Why would you compare Donald Trump to Netanyahu on your way to explaining why you believe that the U.S. should continuously fund what Netanyahu is doing in all of these different countries? It's just, it, it just this obsession with Trump and her ability to understand things only by reference to him, comparing Netanyahu to Trump, and then trying to pretend that the people of Israel are these repressed people trying to overthrow 
the chains that have been imposed on them by the Netanyahu regime when the reason Netanyahu is prime minister is because they've not only elected him but support his war policies and have done so for a long time along the way to explaining why she wants to continue to give money to Israel makes no sense. The other thing I just want to say is that she's been in Congress for about seven seconds and of course she has already made one of those official propaganda trips to Israel. Is there any member of Congress at all in the United States in the Senate or the House who doesn't very quickly go on one of those trips to Israel where they get instructed slash indoctrinated slash propagandized about all the things the Israelis want them to believe? I mean, I don't, I, I, other than maybe Ilhan Omar and Rashid Tlaib, I don't know if there's a single member of Congress, the 535 people who form the House and the Senate, who haven't gone at least once, probably multiple times, on these trips to Israel. It's like a rite of passage to be a member of Congress in the United States. You have to go visit Israel. She's been there a very short period of time, and everything she knows, as she says, is based on her visit to Israel. So let's hear a little bit more from uh, Congresswoman Crockett about why she's so fervently in favor of arming and funding and financing a country that she says is basically led by a corrupt figure akin to Donald Trump. Ended up firing missiles over into Israel. After Israel invaded Lebanon. Okay, but is Iran Lebanon or is Iran? No. Okay, so so. But this thing is it's, it's a spiraling catastrophe that the Biden administration has done nothing to rein in. Let's be clear. When the attacks, which I will say, everything that happened in Lebanon or the initial attacks, at least that was more calculated, and it was more, um, it was it was specifically intended for who? For terrorists, correct? I mean, these are you, you got to clarify what you're saying. I'm not. I don't follow. Hezbollah. Right? So Israel was attacking Hezbollah, correct? Well, they've done a ground invasion into Lebanon now. They have now done one, but to be clear. They were attacking Hezbollah, who is a terrorist organization, correct? Right, but they've invaded the entire country. They've bombed I, Beirut. I just need you to be clear. They've, well, they've Wait, bombed I, I, the country. Okay, so, so... So you think everybody who's been killed in the Israeli bombardments has been Hezbollah? I didn't say that. I'm okay. telling you that what I am saying is that at least when Lebanon, we talked about what? They had the pagers, correct? Right. And so they were literally more calculated in trying not to do... Those pagers blew up in grocery stores and a little girl was killed. I, I, I understand and I'm not disagreeing with it and I want to be clear. No one should ever be okay with war. Well, you voted to fund it. No, I did not vote to fund war. What I voted for... Yes, you did. You voted to supply Israel with armaments that they're using in their prosecution of the war. Do you understand that we took more than one vote? Let me ask you, since you know about I it. I know all about it. I follow it very closely. So tell me about the rest of my votes. Please. On the National Security Supplemental? Can you tell me about all the votes that we had? Because we had more. Yeah, you voted for Ukraine, for the Indo-Pacific, okay, for... Because we had three votes on Israel. Are there there have been like a million votes on Israel. We had three votes. Let me let me clarify. We had three votes as it relates to funding for Israel. So let me make sure that your record is very clear. The very first vote was to fund Israel and defund the IRS because that's what the Republicans put on the floor. That because the Republicans Correct. won the House. Okay. What was my vote? It was a no. No. Then we well, ultimately voted vote. yes on the bill to fund Israel. The second vote was to to fund Israel and no other funding. Okay. The third vote, was it just for funding Israel or was it also to get money to the people of Gaza? I, I which, which, yeah, which, Look, and, and, and that aid has been consistently blocked. I mean, you can complain about Netanyahu, but he's the one administering the funding that you said. She has a live hit. I'm so sorry, everyone. This is about the debate. Governor Walls, he seemed shaky at times. Do you feel like he was an effective messenger tonight? I do. I give? think he was. I think he was there to deliver on policy. It's one of the things that people complained about in the first debate is that they weren't able to get a lot of policy because there were so many. I guess we're, no. as it relates to um, the answers with Donald Trump and things like that. So I think Make sure you get your debate question in. Much more relevant. I am. You interrupted me. After a ten-minute diatribe. <laughs> About a foreign policy issue, what, you object to that? I also have questions I want to ask about. All right, I'm sure they'll be fascinating. 
Not quite as good as the Tammy Duckworth one, but giving it a run for its money. I love how not only does Michael just go and completely disregard the whole purpose of this stupid spin room, which is where you're supposed to like say, who did better? And she's like, clearly Tim Walls. He gave a clear, consistent defense of the working class, whereas Jay... He always ends up fighting with everybody around him, too, when they object. Like, if there's a assistant or a handler who comes in and stops his interview, he'll start trying to interview them. Or in this case, there were journalists complaining that he was asking questions unrelated to the debate, like things that were really trivial, like why is she funding with billions of dollars the wars in Israel by Israel that might lead to escalation in the region and they're killing huge numbers of civilians. They're like, no, no, much more important. Who do you think did better tonight, Congresswoman? Um, so anyway, I just found that amazing because even the, the Biden White House will at least pay a little bit of rhetorical uh, acknowledgement. Oh, that too many people in Gaza, too many innocent Palestinians have been killed that Israel has gone too far in certain cases. She didn't do any of that. She, I mean, and I think one of the things that really is important to understand here is that if you're a member of Congress and you look around, you know that being an incumbent is basically a guarantee to be reelected for life. And pretty much the only exception, the only thing that you can do to jeopardize your ability to stay in Congress forever is to step out of line on Israel. And everybody just watched. APAC poor, billion, millions and millions of dollars, $15 million in one race, $10 million in another to remove Jamal Bowman from Congress and then remove Cori Bush. And obviously members of Congress see that and they understand very well what the rule is, the only rule is, which is you don't speak critically of Israel if you want to keep your job. And so here you have this person who is a young member of Congress representing the supposedly liberal wing of the Democratic Party Young liberals have been very clear in polling and other ways that they don't want the U.S. funding in the Israeli war. They don't believe those Israeli. She has no interest in representing any of that. She just wants to keep her seat, and she knows the way to do that is by repeating everything she heard on her one tr up trip to Israel as of now, one and counting. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming where she'll learn a little bit more about how to, how to speak about this issue. Uh, anyway, we covered all last night, the whole issue of how Iran actually targeted only military targets, whereas Israel has been flattening apartment buildings and schools and refugee camps, killing huge numbers of civilians in Gaza for a full year and Beirut for the last 10 days. But she's here to say that, no, actually, Israel is incredibly targeted as opposed to the terrorists in Iran who just bomb indiscriminately. All right, so that's that. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.